Tommy, we must have walked over a hundred miles and it's getting dark. You know, we've been walking like this for days and days. I don't understand it. Well, you'd think by this time we would run into some sort of civilization. What do you say, Blix? Water. Flix, Flix, baby, come on now. Don't fold up on me now. I have folded, Stan. I have folded. Don't talk like that, Tumpkin. We've got to hang on only a few more miles. You said that yesterday and the day before that and the day before that. Well, somebody's got to keep this expedition together. Somebody's got to look on the brighter side of things. You uh. just can't sit here and wait for somebody to find us. We could have stayed home in the first place. That's gratitude for you. Gratitude? Well, you're the one who got us lost. You're supposed to keep looking at the compass. Where is it? I threw it away. You what? I threw it away. It wasn't working anyway, Stan. It was broke. No matter which way it pointed, it always pointed in the same direction. North. You're hopeless. I don't know why I took you along with me on this deal in the first place. I know why you took me along, because you can always talk me into things. You have a fancy way of making everything sound so good before it happens. So what are you complaining about? It never happens. Look, you're the one who said you always want to be somebody in this world. If we discover this uranium, you'll be more famous than Liberace. You're right, Stan. I'd give anything in the world to be somebody. Not one Waterbury has ever been a success in over 200 years. Chepkin! This is your chance. Somewhere out there is uranium. We find it and you're made. Boy, if I could only get one little tick out of this thing. Boy, if I could only get one little ham sandwich, that would do me. I'm starved. How can you think of food when we're on the verge of discovering uranium? We've got to hang on. Destiny awaits us. Started ticking. Yeah, it's about time. Blakes! Wait a minute. It's ticking. Yeah, yeah, it started a minute ago. Yeah, it's found something. Huh? Stan, maybe. Maybe you can get it. Shut up, listen to it. It's getting louder every minute. Oh, Blakes, baby, I told you. I said we'd be rich. Listen to it. It's yeah. getting louder every minute. Yeah. Hey, hey, Stan, look, look. A light. We're saved. Civilization. Now we can get some need, maybe. Steady, boy. It's probably just an airplane beacon. Yeah, so what? It shows we're near civilization. Not necessarily so. If it's an airplane beacon, it'd be a hundred miles from anywhere. Yeah, well, maybe it isn't. Maybe it's a house. Come on. Yes, nothing to do now, Doctor, but wait. Strange, isn't it? The most powerful atomic bomb yet developed, and it's already outdated. Yes. Right now, in some secluded laboratory, they're already putting on paper a weapon that'll make this look like a firecracker. What's the report on our weather? The latest word is the conditions will be perfect for the detonation. Let's go down. I feel so insignificant up here. Hey, Lou. Hi, Al. Hey, how'd you like that job? No, thanks. Just standing here is bad enough. Yeah, I see what you mean. Hey, I wonder what's going to happen to that house over there. I don't know, but I sure hate to be in it a couple of hours from now. Sir, Baker 3 reports the last reconnaissance saw no fires or possible evidence of any activity. Therefore, the area is presumed secured. Thank you, Corporal. Well, everything all right, gentlemen? Everything ready, General. Then as soon as your men have returned from the tower, we'll go back to Red Dog. Drive down to the tower.
The last helicopter has just come back from checking the area. It's still dark, but in a few hours, the sun will rise over the mountains, and newspaper men, newsreel photographers, Army, Navy, and Marine representatives will have filled this area to watch the latest and biggest atomic explosion scheduled here at Frenchman's Flat. In order to evaluate the effects of the detonation, the Army has placed typical pieces of equipment at varying distances from the target point. Two miles distant, an Army tank and a jeep. At a distance of three miles, a bomber plane. A mile and a half, automobiles with dummies inside. After the blast, scientists will determine the effect had these dummies been real people. Let's hope that real people will never be so close to an atomic explosion. The bomb itself is cradled atop a 100-foot tower overlooking a one-story house set back 200 yards from the tower. The house is a simple structure, frame and shingles, not unlike many houses you'd find all over the country. Inside the house, dummies, such as you might see in a department store window, have been placed to represent an average family. After the bomb explodes, scientists will move in to check the damage, to see exactly what an atom blast could do to Mr. and Mrs. Average American. Now the infantry is moving out to station themselves in trenches two miles from the center of the blast. They're the only human beings that close to the explosion. Stan, what is this thing? Never mind that. Listen to this, it's going crazy. Yeah, yeah, we must have discovered uranium, all right. Wait, we must be standing right on top of it right now. Oh, I knew you wouldn't let us down. Mm. Stan, look. Look over there. A house. We're saved. Come on, Chumpkin. Wait a minute. What do you mean, wait a minute? I'm going in there and wake those folks up. I'm, I'm starved. I want a peanut butter and dill pickle sandwich. How can you think of peanut butter when we've just discovered a uranium field? All right, uranium and dill pickle sandwich. Hold it. You know, this thing isn't ticking as hot as it was over there. And what is that over there, a big television antenna? No, it isn't a television antenna. Anybody with half a brain knows that it's an airplane beacon. Airplane beacon? Why, well, sure, this is a long way from town. This guy probably owns his own airplane. What is he building a big airplane beacon on a field of uranium for? Because the people that own this property don't know that it's on a uranium field. We gotta figure some way of getting it out. Well, how can we dig it out without the folks who own the place knowing about it? We use finesse. We walk up, knock on the door, wake them up, make them an offer. Thousand dollars, long-term, easy payments. Fellow, oh, where are we gonna get a hold of a thousand dollars? A thousand dollars shouldn't be difficult to raise. Remember the trouble we had in raising 35 bucks? I had to take every I've dime. Got it. We sell a tower. We haven't got an airplane anyway. Oh, we sell a tower that we don't own in order to buy a house that we can't afford, huh? Jack, big business. Awfully big business. Well, shall we? Yeah. Lex, Lex, maybe we better leave this stuff outside. You think that anybody's at home? They might be out visiting neighbors. Neighbors? <laughs> What neighbors? There isn't a house around for miles. It's a funny place to build a home. They must like their privacy. You know what? Maybe this is one of those families that moved way out here in the desert to get away from the atom bomb. Could be. Come on. Now remember, you just let me do the talking. Hello now. Oh, I hope somebody's home. I'm awful hungry. Anybody home? Probably nobody is. Come on, we'll wait for them inside. Inside? Uh, it's probably locked. You might have to break the glass. Well, why don't you try it? That's a good idea. Hey, we're in luck. Yeah, it's open, it's open. Come on, give me the foot. That's it, I'm in. Oh. Uh. No. Careful. Stand. boy. That's a boy. Easy. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, I close the window. Yeah. I'm gonna go and find the kitchen. Good boy. 
Good evening. Oh! 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 What happened? People. I wonder why they didn't open the door. What are they sitting in the dark for, Stan? They're having a seance. They're having a what? Never mind. I've got to do some fast talking to explain why we're coming in through the window. Yeah, come on. Be careful. <clears throat> uh, good evening, sir. My name is Stan. Ah! Ah! Wait a minute. It's a dummy. Dummy? Yeah. Yeah, what, what do you know? Say, what kind of a joint is this anyway? I don't know, but I just gotta find the kitchen. <laughs> All right, sir. Now this won't hurt a bit. There we go. And here we are. Yes, sir. Oh. Uh-huh. Mr. R5. There we go. Well, shall we have a fourth for bridge? Oh, uh, I don't play this game too well, you know. No food in the kitchen. Stan, a bomb? What do you mean, a bomb? Out here in the middle of the... Hey, who's she? I don't know. She wasn't here before. What do you mean, she wasn't here before? She's a dummy just like the rest of them. Why, the whole house is full of dummies. I wouldn't be too sure about that. Remember, it was you that got the tack in the back. Say, Stan, what is it with all these dummies? Is it some sort of mirage? This isn't any mirage. Mirages have real dames. Well, it'd be just our luck to get one of the cheaper mirages. Hey, I got it figured out. This is a tract home. You know, a model house. Yeah. They build them and they fill them with dummies just to make it look more authentic. Yeah, it's lucky for us they got dummies instead of people in here. Otherwise, they'd have found out about the uranium before we did, huh? Boy, if we could only get into town and buy this house from the builder before somebody catches on to how much it's worth. Yeah, but it's too late to do anything about it tonight. We'll do it the first thing in the morning. Come on, we'll get some sleep. Yeah. Hey, you don't have to do all the work in the place. You come out and, and join the party. Hey, Flex. Baker 3, tell them we're ready. Yes, sir. Baker 3 from hideout. Baker 3 from hideout. Baker 3 to hideout. Go ahead. Good. Right. Right. Okay. Sir, hideout reports everything secured. Operation Green. Notify fire control. Yes, sir. Guys? Oh, thank you, Sergeant. Tell General Lawler that zero hour will be in exactly seven minutes. Troops are all in the trenches. Guess everything's ready. Ready as it ever will be. I'll make the announcement. Attention, everyone. Attention, please. Zero hour will be in exactly six minutes and 45 seconds. One minute before zero hour, the automatic control will take over. Remember your briefings, and don't forget to put on your glasses. 
Thank you. As you've probably heard, we've just been notified that the bomb will be detonated in approximately six and a half minutes, as scheduled, at exactly five o'clock. The sun is just beginning to rise over the hills. The infantry company, two miles from the center of the blast, are already in the trenches. There's nothing to do now but wait. Wait for the most gigantic explosion in the history of nuclear research. Hey, Stan! It's almost light. Yeah, it's nearly five o'clock. What are we gonna do now? Occupy ourselves, boy. Wait until the sun comes up so we can see where we are. Well, where are you going? I'm gonna check the exact location of that uranium deposit. Full of gas. That's fine, Champion. Now look, I'm going into town to put a deposit on this model Wait home. Well, you Stan. stay here in case any prospectors come around. Tell them it's spoken for. And no matter what happens, don't move. Even if they try to blow you out of here. Yeah. Okay, Stan. And uh, Stan! Bring me back a peanut butter sandwich with bananas on it. minutes to go. Sir! What is it? What's the matter? Look at that! It's headed right this way. How did a car get out here? Come on, some of you men. Follow me. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roll where the deer and the antelope Only four minutes, sir. He's backing up. Come on, you idiot! This way! Come on, bonehead! This way! Three minutes, sir. Back to the trench. And that crazy lame brain? He's coming. He's driving this way. How much time we got? Two minutes. Good morning. Where did you get that car? Well, I didn't steal it. I just borrowed it. My friend and I, we've been lost. Your friend? Yeah, we've been lost for three days now. Where? Where is your friend? Well, back where I borrowed the car in the model house. He's holding down our claim. Boy, did we get a buy there. Ah. If you only knew. Call Baker 3. Only a minute and ten seconds to zero, Lieutenant. Oh, no, you don't. We claim squatters' rights. Call them. Maybe they can stop it. Baker 3 from hideout. Baker 3 from hideout. Food around here someplace. Bananas, bread, peanut butter, horseradish, sardines. 
something's wrong with the connection. I can get through to Baker number three. Keep trying. Now, look, I demand to know what's going on here. We didn't do anything wrong, so why are you calling that Baker guy? In just about a minute, an atom bomb's going off out there. Now, look, don't change the subject. I demand... Atom bomb? If your friend is within a mile of that house, there'll be nothing left of him. No! No, please! 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 Peanut butter, sardines, and horseradish. Got a phone, any? Oh, country phone. Yeah? Operator, uh, could you please tell me the correct time? Are you crazy? We're ready to set the bomb off any second now. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll call you back after you're through. A tower! Bomb! Bomb! Atomic bomb! Ah! Oh, run for cover! Oh! No, run for cover! Twenty seconds to zero, sir. That's the Navy for you. Can you imagine anyone calling at a time like this? Are you sure it was the Navy, General? I'm positive. I just talked to him over that phone. They wanted to know what time it was. That phone? Impossible. Well, that's from a target. Ten, nine, eight. Hello. Hello. Five, four. Target. Target! Two, one, target! any family? Just me. It's deplorable. But at least it was quick. He never knew what hit him. Poor little chumpkin. When Mr. Cooper feels up to it, take down his entire story and let me see it. Have a cigarette. Tell me, what was your friend's full name? Barnaby Waterbury. How'd you fellas happen to get lost out here? seen this much radiation before, Doctor. We won't jump at conclusions. Let's see how our tests turn out. We'll check the house first. What's that? Something's moving over there. It can't be. Look, coming out of the wreckage.
Don't touch him. He's radioactive. Is he human? I'm afraid he is. He couldn't be radioactive. Please, gentlemen, this is no time for hysterics. Get someone with a camera, quick. We gotta get pictures of this before he disintegrates. Hold it. Dr. Rodell, don't you... Please, think? quiet. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear every word you're saying, but your voices sound funny. I've never heard such voices in my life. What language well, is he I'm speaking? Saying, English. He's there, just but he's talking at twice the speed. I'd say his basal metabolism has doubled. Doubled? Gentlemen, you are seeing scientific history in the making. If this young man has actually withstood a nuclear chain reaction, the only help for the poor fellow is to get him to the laboratory immediately and immerse him in a bath of heavy water. Come along, son. Don't take him away till well, I get some pictures. Well, for heaven's sake, hurry up. There's a life at stake here. I was standing and just eating the sandwich, minding my own business, when all of a sudden... Excuse me, please. You want a picture? Yes, of course. Well, I'll pose for the picture. While I was standing in the house there, just minding my own business, eating a sandwich, when all of a sudden, boom, I swear I don't know what happened. Oh, it's hot. Excuse me. Well... Hurry it up. Oh, you want another picture? Thank you, Frank. Well, I'll turn this... No, it's all right. Well, as I was saying, I was standing... Uh, I was, as I said, I'm eating the sandwich, just standing there, minding my own business, when boom, the whole thing... Thank I'm you, warning you, man, now. This is top secret. Sandwich, minding my own don't business, quote it. Sudden, Oh, it's hot. Excuse me. Well, uh, I was, as I said, I'm eating the sandwich, just standing there, minding my own The question that is uppermost in everyone's mind is how did Barnaby Blix Waterbury live through the cataclysm of a nuclear explosion? Is this a victory for the human race over the atom bomb? The amazing feat of Blix Waterbury has brought new hope to the peoples of the world. And now to bring you the latest word on this controversy, this network has arranged to interview the leading authorities on Operation Miracle. General Lawler, you were in the operation shack when the bomb was detonated. Now, can you tell us in your own words your explanation for Blix Waterbury's amazing survival? No comment. Well, General, there's a rumor going around that uh, you were on the phone when the bomb exploded. No comment. Yes, well, uh, 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 thank you, General, for your uh, colorful recreation of the scene. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on my right is Dr. Edgar Pangburn, assistant to the chief physicist at Atomic City. Dr. Pangburn was one of the first on the scene after the bomb exploded. Uh, tell us, Dr. Pangburn, what is the true story? No comment. Well, have you any idea how Blix Waterbury happened to be on the scene in the first place? No comment. I see. Well, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard an exclusive first-hand analysis of the most controversial topic of the day. And don't forget, you heard it here first. Uh, thank you, General. And uh, thank you, Dr. Pangburn. And now for another authoritative report. Those of you who are regular viewers of this program will remember Wildcat Hooper when he reported on the controversial topic of flying saucers last month. Howdy. Now, them flying saucers, they was about this much and about all no, about that much. We heard all that. But you cut me off, remember? I was just telling you about them little fellas. No, no, we're not here to talk about flying saucers tonight. Well, let's not snub them little fellas. Cute as the devil they was. Smart critters, too. But we want to hear about the atomic kid, Blix Waterbury. That's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Why, this here Blix, he ain't no human being. He's from Mars. Last time I was on them flying saucers, them little men, they told me all about him. They said they had a lot of fellas like that planted on this earth to observe and take notes. Why, as I tried to tell you a couple of months ago, these here observers, just like people. A little green in the face, but it ain't too noticeable. Why, you take my wife, Sadie. She has sort of a green tinge. Wildcat, let's stick to the subject. Now, let's not snub my wife, Sadie. Oh, well, then your theory is that Blix Waterbury is from another planet. I'd bet my life on it. I have the word of them little fellas. And no matter what you say about them, they're truthful. <laughs> well, thank you. Why, thank if you, you could have seen them yeah, coming out of that thank there you, flying saucer. Thank you very saucer. much. Fine, thank you, you Wildcat. Little That's fellas fine. You ever seen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good morning. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Now what? Hey, you can't shove me around. What am I supposed to do, say, sir? 
Remember, I outrank you. I'm a civilian. Okay, civilian, so you should know how to read. No admittance. Apparently, you don't know who I am. I'm Blix Waterbury's manager. And if it weren't for me, Blix wouldn't have... Never mind. <clears throat> I said nobody goes in there. Well, how about her? Yeah, how about her? Hey, nurse! Yes? This guy says I can't go in there. Tell him who I am. Very well. I haven't the slightest idea who he is. Now, wait a minute. I happen to be Blix Waterbury's manager. Oh, you must be Stan. That's right, Stan. I see you've heard about me, too. Uh-huh. Blix mumbles about you in his sleep constantly. He does? Mm -hmm. He says, Stan, Stan, where are you, Stan? If I get my hands on you, so help me, I'll break every bone in your body. Oh, he doesn't say that. He says that and other things I prefer not to mention in mixed company. Well, how is he? Is, is he okay now? He's doing as well as can be expected, considering he was exposed to a nuclear chain reaction. He's highly radioactive. Yeah? Consequently, no one is allowed near him. Mr. Waterbury is extremely dangerous. Well, I can see how he got that way. Could you take me in to see him, please? Do you have a pass? Of course, a pass, of course. Here it is. May I see that, please? Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, why didn't you ask? And now, if you don't mind, would you take me in to see Mr. Waterbury? I have some business I'd like to discuss with him. He's not discussing business with anyone. I told you your friend is extremely radioactive. He must be handled from a distance. Uh-huh. I've got to remember this for my next interview. Come this way. And remember, hands off everything. Makes it kind of tough on a fella. Now, don't get upset. Blix. Blix, what are they doing to you? Oh, Mr. Cooper. He isn't moving. Well, he still lapses into comas occasionally, but he's improving. Well, is it going to be all right? Well, I'm not a doctor of medicine, you understand. I'm merely a physicist. Well, hadn't you better call a doctor? Well, we've called many doctors, leading physicians and surgeons. They can find nothing organically wrong with your friend. His problem is more in the field of nuclear physics. He radiated like pure U-235. Oh, sure. Is that good? Well, it's a little early to tell. It might explain some of the mysteries we've been trying to solve. It might turn out, Mr. Cooper, that the human race will owe your friend a great debt. You don't say. Dr. Rodale, he's moving. Oh, Bob, turn him on his side. Well, what are you doing to him now? We can't risk touching him till the radioactivity wears off, so we're using mechanical manipulators. Don't be upset, Blix. This is Dr. Rodell behind the glass. We're working the mechanical hands. They won't harm you. Well, well, take it easy. I'm ticklish. Is the D2O ready? Yes, Dr. Rodell. D2O? What's that? Deuterium oxide. Oh? What's that? Heavy water. We use heavy water to slow down the neutrons. You see, your friend Blix still has a miniature chain reaction going on inside him. Now, when he gets excited, his blood pressure goes up and he becomes more and more radioactive. The only thing that can get him back to normal is the heavy water. Oh, naturally. That figures. Okay, Bob, try it again. <laughs> Better do something quick. He's flipping his neutrons. All right, dunk him in the heavy water. No! No, wait! Leave me go! Careful, careful, don't drop him. No! No, no, no! Let it, let it go! No farther to your left. No, please! No! No! Look, I'll explode all over you! No! <laughs> now let him down. No! No, 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 doctor! 
please. No. What? What? The water's all over. I don't. I don't want. I don't. I don't want to. Looks like we've got a little troublemaker on our hands. I think he's cute. I'll take that. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I'm with Blake's Waterbury. And I'm with J. Edgar Hoover. The FBI? Yes, and we don't allow you to take any homework out of here. Oh, Mr. Cooper, Dr. Rodell says you can come visit Blix tomorrow. Thank you. How about tonight? Uh, no, thank you. I haven't any mechanical arms to handle you. Miss Nelson, I said, how about tonight? Shut up! Those mechanical pincers are getting softer. Stop playing possum. I know you're awake. How am I today, Audrey? Your pulse is normal. That's not saying much for you, is it? You are getting well. Hey, be careful how you handle me. I'm liable to explode. There's no danger of that anymore. Audrey, tell me something. Why is it when you visit me, you always wear a mask over your face? The mask is for your protection. My protection? I'm the guy that survived the atom bomb blast, remember? I think I could take a chance on your face. Silly. You know, when I was in the army, I used to know a girl in Arabia. She wore a veil, covered her whole face, all except her eyes. I used to wonder what she looked like without the veil. One day she took it off for two packs of cigarettes. Boy, was I disillusioned. She had teeth all the way down to here. <laughs> so how do you know I don't have teeth down to here? Oh, come on, Audrey. I want to live dangerously. Well, get a good grip on yourself. I dare you to take my pulse now. You'll find that very satisfactory. Now, Mr. Cooper, I'd like to show you the layout for the newspapers and magazines. Does anybody have a cigar? Oh, be my guest. <laughs> oh. Huh. For after dinner. Well, thank you. My pleasure. Now, as I was saying, the moment you get Waterbury to identify the peanut butter he was eating during the explosion as Mother Goose's homogenized peanut butter, we'll go to town with this. <laughs> well, I don't know. Let's look at the record. He was eating a peanut butter sandwich before the bomb went off. And he did survive, didn't he? That it must have been the peanut butter. Now, we're willing to pay $20,000 to get Waterbury to endorse Mother Goose. Snyder's item-proof pants offered us $30,000 for Waterbury's testimonial. Mother Goose will pay $40,000. And a year's supply of peanut butter. Well, there's room for everybody, Mr. Anderson. Why don't you have your attorney draw up your proposal in writing and I'll submit it to Blix. We'd like to get moving on this thing. Mother Goose always follows through. Now you'll have to excuse me, Mr. Anderson. I've kept Mr. Reynolds waiting long enough. Why don't you contact me in the morning? I will. Good day. Good day. Ah, oh, Mr. Reynolds, I'm terribly sorry to have kept you waiting, but it's been like this all day. You see, Blix has had movie offers, television offers, proposals of marriage from movie starlets. 
Why, they even want him to become one of Arthur Godfrey's friends. I just haven't had a chance to take a breath all day. That's what happens when you get a million dollar property laid right in your lap. A million dollars? Hmm. Nobody's ever mentioned that kind of money before. I'm mentioning it now. I took the liberty of having these contracts drawn up. Just look them over, and then you can sign right down here at the bottom as Waterbury's power of attorney. Hey, wait a minute. What's all this? We're going to incorporate Blix Waterbury, put everything in one package, and most important, we're going to syndicate the story of his life. Written by you, Stan Cooper. But I've never written anything in my whole life. I flunked high school English. We've already taken care of that. As a matter of fact, we've engaged a Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist to ghostwrite it for you. No kidding. All you have to do is to collect the information for us. We don't want any sensationalism. We want the authentic facts about Blix Waterbury's experience. How did he survive the bomb? What are the scientists saying? What kind of test did the Department of Defense make? Get us some real factual background. Of course, if you can get photographs of the apparatus, that would be the best thing. Uh-uh, pictures are out. I tried taking a picture of Blix when he was in the heavy water, but the FBI almost broke my arm trying to take away my camera. That's understandable. The government has got to be careful. But the public is entitled to know the full story of Blix Waterbury. Oh, uh, when you visit your friend Blix again, just wear this in your lapel. Oh? What's this? It's a miniature camera concealed by the flower. I'll show you how it works later. But first, here's a check for $10,000 the advance royalty on your best-selling Life of Blix Waterbury. I don't know. I don't think I should do this. But, Mr. Cooper... I have hay fever, you know. Mr. Reynolds... This looks like something a spy might use. Well, that's silly, isn't it, Mr. Reynolds? You a spy, a solid citizen like you. <laughs> you a spy? <laughs> that's a hot one. <laughs> Come in. Hiya, Blake. Oh, hi, Stan. <laughs> Hey, they really have this room fixed up nice for you, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'd like to take some pictures of it. That is, if I had a camera. Say, what are you doing with the boot and air on? I thought you had hay fever. Oh, uh, well, this is just an artificial flower. Hey, it's giving me artificial hay fever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Flex. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, what, what's the matter with you? Oh, nothing. I just feel good today. You know, I'm just about ready to sign us up for a million dollars. Maybe two million. Yeah, well, I don't care anything about a million dollars. I just wished I could get out of here. Do you realize that I have been cooped up in this room for over a month now? But, Chumpkin, you're the most famous guy in the world today. You're somebody. Hmm. Somebody. I wished I was nobody again. Oh, it's not that they don't treat me nice in here. I can have anything I want or go any place I want as long as I stay in this room. But Dr. Rodell said you were enjoying yourself. He's a very nice man. You know, he took me on a tour the other day to see the whole place here. Believe it or not, I didn't understand a thing he showed me. Hey, you gotta remember some of that. We need that for the book. Book? What book? Oh, I'll get to that later. First thing I want to know, do you remember what brand of peanut butter it was you were eating when the bomb went off? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It was awful oily and it, and it stuck to my teeth. <laughs> was it Mother Goose's homogenized peanut butter? I don't know. Hey, oh, Stan, look what they gave me. They took away my wristwatch and gave me this. Look, it's there. Thank, Blix. What brand of peanut butter was it? If you say it was Mother Goose, it's worth 40,000 bucks to us. It looks like a wristwatch, doesn't it? But it really isn't. It's a Geiger counter. Never mind about that. Geiger counter? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it keeps track of my radioactivity. When I get excited, it makes me calm down. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Hey, let me have a look at that. Ah, a little closer. That's it. What's the matter? You you nearsighted or something? Oh, no. I just have uh, astigmatism. Oh. Now, look, Blix. Let's get down to business. Now, we know you were wearing a Snyder suit when the bomb went off, but we're not sure what brand of peanut butter it was. Concentrate. 
Was it Mother Goose? I don't know, Stan. I was so hungry. I, I was so busy. Hi, fellas. At... Oh, hi, Audrey. Well, Princess Nightingale in person. How's the national hero feeling today? Hey, what's ticking? My Geiger counter, it always reacts that way when Audrey comes near me. Ridiculous. Oh, I don't know. Mine's ticking. And I don't even have one. Well, I think every man should wear one so a girl can be forewarned. Say, uh, Audrey, have they told you when they're gonna let me out of here? No, but the parole board's meeting any day now. Remember, when they do let me out, we have a date the first night. <laughs> How could I forget? You remind me of it every day. Your medicine, sir? Oh, not, not more of this green stuff. Now, I hate to break up your gab fest, but Dr. Rodell and Dr. Pangborn are coming in for another session with you, Blix. More third degree, Kasha. I've told them everything I know. Next time I get blown up, I'm going to take notes. Remember, it's for the good of science. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Gosh. Gee, that Audrey. I'd have gone nuts if she hadn't been here, Stan. Yeah, she's a great girl. She certainly is. And she thinks a lot of you. Thanks, Stan. Well, she was telling me at dinner last night just how sorry she was feeling for what you're going through. Dinner last night? You mean, you mean you two had, had dinner last night together? Yeah, we went into town last night. You should see how she looks when she's all dressed up. Wow! Waterbury, are you all right? Yeah, I, I'm all right. I'm just lying here, cracking my knuckles. subtle about it, is he? You sure you don't want us to stop him? Officially, I can't permit him to leave the premises, Jim. But as long as your men keep him under surveillance, I can't see that he'll get into any harm. Fine. It'll do him good to have some recreation. this every night before retiring. It helps relax me. <laughs> what am I going to say to the fellas when they ask me what's... Oh, nice? say, uh, will you come here, please? Will you help me down off the thing here? Would you mind telling me how you managed to get up there? Never mind. I wouldn't believe it anyway. With my technical observations on Blix, I've also taken a few personal footnotes. Unless I miss my guess, he's on his way to see Nurse Nelson. Here he comes. Don't stare at him, it'll embarrass him. Maybe we 
should have left more sheets. <laughs> Jim, is it protocol for the FBI to help a man escape? Well, I don't think he's going to make it on his own. I just hope the enemy never gets their hands on him. He'd never get away. <laughs> Hello, Ray. Are you and Bill watching this? Well, don't just stand there. Help the kid. What's up? Chief wants us to help this kid. Too bad we didn't bring our catches mitts. <laughs> Let's get this trash can underneath the window. He'll have something to step on in case he winds up short again. fella get any rest around here? I was just wondering how you felt about a game of honeymoon bridge. Uh, not tonight, thank you. I'm resting my neutrons. Couldn't we have had this kind of luck with Dillinger? electricity it's a wonder it didn't kill him the atom bomb didn't kill him this is kid stuff very much luck, is he? Mm -hmm. well, looks like we're elected. Let's go. Hop in. Oh, thanks. Thanks, fellas. I want to thank you fellas for picking me up. It's almost impossible to get anybody to stop for you nowadays. <laughs> oh, we were always picking people up. Say, isn't that Atomic City over there where they're doing all that research? Yeah, in fact, I'm working on a secret project myself. Not allowed to talk about it, though. In fact, I'm not even supposed to be out tonight. There's FBI men all around the place, but I managed to give them the slip. <laughs> Boy, would I like to see the expressions on their faces now. <laughs> You don't happen to be Blix Waterbury, the atomic kid, do you? That's a confidential matter, sir. If there's one thing about me, I can keep a secret. Say, Blix. Yeah? Would you like to smoke? No, no, thanks. I don't smoke. Smoking and radioactivity don't mix. How about some music? Yeah. You know, fellas, the important thing about confidential matters is that you don't talk to anybody about them. Say, did I tell you what the Secretary of Defense told Dr. Rudell yesterday? A lot of static on that station. There seems to be some kind of interference tonight. 
Yeah, maybe we're passing a high tension wire or something. Could be radioactivity coming from the plant over there. Washington, D.C. At his press conference this afternoon, the chief executive reiterated that Waterbury is the nation's top secret and might turn out to be the country's foremost weapon for peace. He's a weapon? New York. At the United Nations General Assembly today, the Russian delegate announced to the world that his country has invented its own Blix Waterbury. And now we'll take you to London for the latest news from the British Empire. Thanks very much, gentlemen. See you around. Here. Nobody knows I'm here, not even the FBI. Well, why did you sneak out? Because I wanted to see you, Audrey. Is, is Stan around any place? Oh, we had to meet someone on business. He said he'd be right back. Uh, and you'd better get yourself back to the hospital this minute. Look, I risked my life to try and see you. I'm going to stay and enjoy it. Very well, I'll take you back myself. Oh, unhand me, please, Audrey. You're, you're making my Geiger counter act up. <laughs> well, if you want to get into trouble, it's none of my concern. Audrey. Audrey, please. I, I, I fell out a window to try and get here. Listen, Audrey. Honest, you've got to believe me. I just came here because I wanted... Oh, look, another jackpot. Two jackpots in a row. Gosh. Do you think my radioactivity has anything to do with it? I don't know. Come on, we'll find out. My neutrons must have, must have blown their top. Look at this. Oh, it's, it's a nice, nice place you have here, officer. We've never been this lucky before. No. <laughs> finish this thing tomorrow, I have my date waiting for me at the casino. I'm very disappointed with these pictures. Well, I did the best I could. I snapped my boot and everything I thought was interesting. This is interesting? Mm, that's Audrey. Blix's nurse. Now do you see why I want to get back to the casino? And who's this? Oh, that's Audrey again. You know, I like that pose better. How about this blurred one? I knew it wouldn't come out. She moved. Audrey, 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 how is this going to help our project? Well, I thought being a girl, she might provide the love interest in the book. We are not composing a cheap love story. We want facts, that's all, just facts. Well, don't get sore, it's only a book. Look, comrade, uh, Cooper. Mr. Reynolds, my name is not Conrad. Stan. I'm sorry, Stan. I didn't mean to lose my temper. But don't you realize we need pictures of Blix and the scientific apparatus? Well, I took a lot of pictures of Blix. But they didn't bother developing them. You see, he's so radioactive, he fogs the film. But I took one of that big cyclotron. You did? Where is it? Hmm. There it is. This is a cyclotron? Looks like somebody's nose. 
Well, can I help it if just as I snap the picture, this FBI guy smells my boutonniere? You snapped a picture with the FBI there? Well, sure, there were a lot of them there. But this one guy, the guy with the nose, he kept getting in my way. So this is where you live, huh? It's very nice. I was lucky to be able to rent a room from such nice people as the Armsby's. You can come in, but be quiet. They're probably asleep. Gee, it sure is a nice place. I haven't been into a living room for a long time. Without dummies, I mean. It hasn't been much fun for you, has it? Oh, Audrey. I don't know what I would have done without you. You just go sit down and make yourself comfortable. I'll get us something cool to drink. You know, I want to apologize for losing all that money. I guess roulette wheels are radioactive proof. Hello? Extension 238, please. Hello? Dr. Rodell? This is Audrey Nelson. Oh, yes, Miss Nelson. Did you know the Blix Waterbury escaped from the hospital? Yes, I did. Well, he's here at my house now. Yes, I know. Well, aren't you going to send the FBI over? Why, do you need a chaperone? Is this Dr. Rodell? Yes, Audrey, this is Dr. Rodell. There's nothing to be concerned about. I thought Blix deserved a little recreation. So enjoy yourselves. Oh, and Audrey, uh, keep an eye on that Geiger counter. That's how you really feel about Stan? Of course. Stan and I are just friends. It'd be pretty hard for a girl to get serious about Stan. Her main competition would be Stan. Gosh, I'll, I'll bet he got sore when you walked out on him in the casino. Oh, I didn't walk out on him. He said he'd be back in a half an hour, and I waited almost two hours. I can't imagine him standing you up. Nothing would be that important. Well, he's probably out making another deal to cash in on your name. Well, sure, Audrey, Stan makes all the deals for me, but don't forget, I get 10% of everything. I still don't like the way he's exploiting you. Oh, look, let's... let's not talk about Stan. I only have a few hours left of freedom. Let's just concentrate on us. Your uh, Geiger counter's ticking. Sometimes I wonder whether this thing is for me or against me. Gosh, it's awful hot in here, isn't it? I hadn't noticed. I, I know what it is. It's the lights. They, they make the room awful warm. Gosh, it's, it's cooler already, don't you think? But uh, we don't want it too cool in here now, do we? You know, I feel quite honored sitting next to the most important man in the world. I'll bet there are lots of girls who'd like to trade places with me right now. Audrey, I'm not interested in a lot of girls. I, I just want to concentrate on one. Funny. What? I always pictured my dream man as being tall, dark, and handsome. And then you come along. Short, red-headed, and radioactive. Audrey. Of us. Oh, it's like having a chaperone in the room with you all the time. I've never been kissed like that before in my life. Honest? God. Please don't. Say, there's, there's, there seems to be another light on in the room someplace. It's you. You're glowing. I'm glow. Gosh, I've had a relapse. Oh, but what a wonderful relapse it's been. Maybe we'd better not see each other anymore. 
You'd better go now. Well, all right. Won't you give me one little kiss goodnight? I don't think it's safe. I don't mean a 20,000 volt kiss. I mean just one of those little short circuit kisses. Well, be careful. I will. Imagine a nice young man like Stan Cooper dealing with foreign agents. Well, we're convinced that Cooper doesn't know Reynolds is a spy. He's only trying to make a fast dollar. Are you going to pick him up? Not yet. We've let him keep the boutonniere camera, but we've stymied any movies made to photograph strategic installations. So far, he's only led us to Reynolds. But we're hoping he'll take us to someone higher up in the espionage ring. Mm -hmm. Jim, what do you think these foreign agents are after? Surely not the secret of the bomb. They already have that. They're after Waterbury himself. They think, like most of the people in the world, that his survival of the blast must be the clue to some new scientific discovery. We're close to the answer now. And when the final results are assembled, it'll come as quite a surprise to everyone. Come in. Oh, Blex, come on in. How are you, sir? Hi, doctor. Miss Nelson tells me you two are thinking of getting married. Am I invited to the wedding? Well, sir. If we do get married, we're, we're going to elope. Nobody's going to see it. <laughs> Don't be too sure. Goodbye, Doctor. So long, Blix. Goodbye, sir. Doctor, they said you wanted to see me? Blix, I think it's time for another treatment. Another treatment? Oh, Doctor, how many more treatments am I going to have to have? Oh, I don't think it'll be too many. We'll see today. Please, facts, uh, Doctor, you have... Uh, doctor, uh, do, you, hmm? doc, do you have all of the facts there about the treatments, I mean? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes so, uh, Dr. Rodell said three weeks ago that it would be any day now. What's the answer? Oh, um, well, maybe we better wait till Dr. Rodell gets here. Oh, but, Doctor, look, don't you know that I'm the fellow that this is happening to? Don't I at least have a right to know the answer? Uh, very well. Doctor, what does this all mean? Oh, well, I see no harm in telling you what it means. Putting it simply, it means that our latest findings are completely negative. You're no longer radioactive. Not radio... You mean... You mean, Doctor, that it's all gone? You are of no further scientific interest to us. I, I'm no longer a secret weapon? No, you're of no importance to your government any longer, Waterbury. For the past five months, we've given you every conceivable test and the results add up to a scientific zero. Zero. Hmm. It's going to be hard trying to be a normal guy again. Not glowing in the dark anymore. 
hitting the jackpots on the slot machines or endorsing Mother Goose's peanut butter. I'm turning in my Geiger counter, Doctor. Wonder if Audrey will marry me now when she knows about this. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> I've got to get back to work. We are detonating another nuclear weapon this afternoon. Mm. If I don't see you again, Waterbury, good luck. Thank you, Doctor. Oh. Blix, Dr. Pangborn break the good news to you? Yes. Why so solemn? I thought you'd be happy to know you're a normal human being again. It's a funny thing, Doctor. When I was nobody, I used to dream of the day that I'd be somebody. When I became somebody, all it meant was just a lot of examinations and being cooped up in a room. And I'd have given anything to have been nobody again. Now that I'm nobody again, I... I don't know what I want. There are a great many people like that, Blakes. You know the old saying, there are only two types of people in the world. Those who are unhappy because they haven't got what they want, and those who are unhappy because they have. Hmm. Well, I... I guess I'll, I'll leave. You don't want me hanging around here anymore. <laughs> Blakes, let's not put it that way. You're welcome to drop in and see me anytime you feel like it. You mean, Doctor, I can just... I can just go? You're free to go anywhere you please. Huh. Uh, without the FBI? The FBI isn't guarding you anymore. Huh. That's a relief. Funny, that's what they said. Hmm? <laughs> oh, by the way, Blix, I know the newspaper men will be looking for you, so I'm holding up the announcement of your departure for three or four days. That's son, so you can make your own plans. I don't know what plans I'm going to make, Doctor. Oh, now, I'm sure Audrey will take care of that. <laughs> Good luck, Blakes. Thanks, Doc. Oh, one other thing. I have a personal favor to ask you. Sure. We're setting off a nuclear weapon this afternoon at 5 o'clock sharp. Another bomb. Would you, for heaven's sake, stay out of the area? I will. Say, Doctor, perhaps you can tell me. How did I survive the atom bomb blast? I only hope you can remember the prayers you said when the bomb went off. Because five months of careful research have shown us that only a miracle could have saved you. Goodbye, Doctor. Bye, Blakes. to say you don't like any of those either? I could have bought better ones on postcards at the drugstore. Well, I think it was that boutonniere camera. It's hard to focus. That's why I bought this imported camera. I think it'll give us the results we want. You see, it has a 1-9 lens and then I'm sure stop we... playing games. You're no help to us. You're through. Through? Hey, you're kidding. What about our contract to do Blitz's life story? You can't be serious. No one could possibly be that stupid. I'll say I'm not that stupid. A contract's a contract. Blix and I have a million bucks coming to us and we're gonna collect every cent of it. Now, don't play innocent with me, Cooper. You sold out. You know as well as I do, it wasn't for any book that you were taking pictures of atomic research. What do you mean it wasn't? It wasn't? As if you didn't know. Ah, you've been playing me for a dupe. I've just been a dope being played for a dupe. Now it all starts to line up. You weren't calling me Conrad. You were calling me Comrade. And the way your face turned white when I mentioned the FBI. Life story, huh? All right, Cooper. You can stop now. You're almost as bad an actor as you are a photographer. Clear up your conscience any way you want. The simple fact is, you're of no use to us anymore. Oh, well, I'm not, huh? Well, I've got one further service to perform, comrade. Operator. Operator. Put down that phone. That's enough of the Boy Scout stuff. Sit down. You might be of a little use to us yet. The organization wants Blix Waterbury, and we intend to use him to do our own research. Well, you're not going to get him through any help of mine. Go ahead and shoot. I deserve a hole in the head for being so stupid. Now, you are being stupid. I'm being stupid. You're being stupid. Do you think that you can get within a mile of Blix Waterbury? Why, they have him so closely guarded at Atomic City, even the FBI has to get permission to get in to see him. And you're gonna lay your hands on him. Don't make me laugh. 
See who it is. And no tricks. Hi, Stan. Uh, no, thanks. No Girl Scout cookies today. They can be such pests. Let's ignore them. What's the idea? Close the door. Huh? Yeah, sure. So, what's going on here? We don't have any laundry to send out today. Now get out of here. This is a business conference, Blix. Hold it. Well, Mr. Waterbury, speaking of the devil, and then you appear. We were just discussing how important you were, that even the FBI couldn't get in to see you. Blix, you dick. What did you do? Sneak out again? I didn't sneak. Quiet! Come on, let's get moving. Oh, wait, a, wait a minute. What's this all about, Stanley? In case you don't know, Mr. Reynolds is a lousy spy. A spy? A spy? I don't believe it. Yeah, they goofed with me. Now they want to take you out of here and experiment with you. Cut you up in little pieces and see what makes you tick. Come on, let's get moving. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Reynolds. I, I wouldn't be any use to you. You underestimate yourself, Mr. Waterbury. We have a lot of use for the only living nuclear chain reaction. Come on, let's get going. Now, wait a minute. Aren't you forgetting something, Reynolds? You wouldn't dare fire that gun at me. Don't tempt me. Uh, you fire that gun at me and it might cause a, a chain reaction and uh, I'd explode all over you. Yes, do you, do you know that they examined me just this afternoon for radioactivity? And you know what it was? It was uh, pi r squared over 4 minus 1. And if you're any kind of a scientist, Mr. Reynolds, you'll know that that's darn near the exploding point. No, no, don't get excited, Chumpkin. Remember, if you go off, we all go. I'm feeling a little on edge, Stan. Yes, if anything happens, the least little thing sets me off. This whole room's liable to go up in smoke. I, I just hope I don't even hiccup. You don't expect me to fall for that comic book stuff. Get going. Oh, if we could only stall them until 5 o'clock, Stan. What happened at 5 o'clock? What are you two mumbling about? Oh, we were just uh, talking about my hiccups. My hiccups are terrible, but if I sneeze, it's disastrous. One sneeze and I could blow up a whole city block. All right, go ahead and sneeze. Huh? Sneeze. Well, uh, it takes me a few seconds to work it up here a little. I... <laughs> you know what I think, Waterbury? I think you're a phony. Just scare propaganda put out by the government. That's right, he is a phony. And you don't want to have anything to do with a phony, do you, Mr. Reynolds? So let's get out of here, you phony. Wait a minute, I, I feel a hiccup coming on. <laughs> Excuse me, must have been something I ate. You get the idea, Mr. Reynolds? My neutrons are warming up. The chain is beginning to form. I, I'm going to sneeze. Run for the hills! Now, Mr. Reynolds, do you still think I'm a phony? It's a good thing I stifled that sneeze. You're not human. Are, are we still alive? You better hand over that gun. Yeah, hand it over and be quick. What do you think, you're playing with kids? Yeah, you said you were going to take us some other place. Where was it? I, I can't tell you. You better tell me. If you think that sneeze was anything, wait till you see me ram my head against the wall. Don't wait. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I was taking you to the room right over this. Yeah, who's in the room? My superior, comrade, uh, Mr. Mosley. We'll get him on the phone and tell him to come down here right away. Go on. Operator. Operator, get me room 412. Hey, Templin, don't go ramming your head against the wall. Remember, it's our lives, too. Listen, Stan, it was just a bluff. Dr. Rodell said that I'm cured. I've lost all of my radioactivity. What a relief. What? Your radioactivity's gone. Shh, be quiet. You want to get us killed? Hello, Mosley. You've got to come down here right away. It's important. I'll tell you when you get here. Hurry. Now all we have to do is to wait for the head guy to get here, then tie you fellas up and hand you over to the FBI. Yeah. Then we'll be heroes again. We can sell our life story to the movies. Let's see. Clark Gable should play me. Of course, we'll find somebody to play you. No, we haven't had a day off in so long, I don't know how to act. <laughs> what makes it so enjoyable is that we've seen the last of Waterbury. Please, please, don't mention that name. <laughs> you know, Chumpkin, on second thought, I don't think we can find anybody to play you. 
We may have to write you out of the picture entirely. I don't care if anybody ever plays my life story. After this is all over, Audrey and me, we're going to be married. Can you imagine Audrey and me married? <laughs> hey, Stan, that must be... Hey, was that Mosley? I can't tell you. I'll sneeze again. That was Mosley. Yeah. Here. Listen. Help! Help! Anybody! Sounds like Waterbury. No, it couldn't be. Watch out for a man in a black hat that might be coming out of the hotel any minute! I'll be right down! Oh, no, you don't. Listen to this. In a spectacular feat of heroism, Blix Waterbury, the former atomic kid, dived out of a third-story hotel window today to apprehend the leading agent of an international espionage ring. The capture took place under the startled eyes of two FBI men, disguised as tennis players. Stan should have gotten all the credit. If it hadn't been for his sock on the jaw, none of this could have happened. Wait a minute, there's more. Waterbury's friend, Stan Cooper, who assisted in rounding up the spy ring, left late today for Hollywood, where he's going to consult with studio officials about a picture based on his life. He said he thinks Clark Gable will play the leading role. I wonder if Gable's good enough. Hero Waterbury and his former nurse, Audrey Nelson, were married here today before a justice of the peace and left for an extended honeymoon. Gee, I wish they hadn't have printed that. I didn't want anybody to know where we were going. That's why I'm taking all these back roads. Are you sure you know where you're going, Blix? Sure, we ought to be hitting San Francisco any minute now. We'd better stop at the next house we see and ask for directions. All right, Mrs. Waterbury. <laughs> hey, oh, there's one up there. Come on in with me, honey. We'll... We'll ask the folks inside for the directions and maybe they'll give us a cool drink. All right, Blix. All right, gentlemen. Put on your glasses. The plane dropping the H-bomb is approaching the target now. Oh! <laughs> 